Passenger pigeons once thrived in the United States. Millions upon millions darken the sky during their nomadic migrations across the eastern and central United States in the early 1800s. But only a century later, the passenger pigeon was extinct. The sad story resonates with 73-year-old Logan County resident Keith Nipp. Not only has the lamentable loss of a species because of irresponsible human activities, but because he can see the similarities today with another bird species, the northern bobwhite. An avid quail hunter since the mid-50s, Keith has personally experienced the highs and lows of this upland game bird's existence in Oklahoma. I don't think we'll ever see again like uh, like it used to be. Keith recalls hunting birds in the late 50s and the early 60s. The hunting was unbelievable. It, it, it was kind of like what I pictured the, the passenger pigeon must have been when there were so many birds like that. No, but nobody could foreseen then that quail were going to go through these up and down cycles like they've done. He was born in 1946 and was raised in southwest Oklahoma City. He thinks he must have been about eight or nine years old when he first began shooting with shotguns. It was the environment we grew up in. I mean, everybody hunted and fished and go down the crawdad hole and catch crawdads. Well, we were poor and just didn't realize it. So hunting and fishing was more than just a sport. It put food on the table. A kid down the block, uh, a couple years older than me, he, grew, he was, lived uh, west of me. And we would get together and go with our shotguns and we'd shoot squirrels, rabbits, quail if we was lucky enough to get into it. And we'd kill one goose in eight or nine years. It was about 1957 when Keith went on his first serious quail hunting trip. When I really started bird hunting, it was when the first trip out western Oklahoma. Uh, I thought I'd uh, died and went to heaven. As many quail as we saw crossing the roads, I mean, you're going down, you're going down the highway three and the birds would be just getting up flying cubbies across the road. The quail hunting was good back then. The typical hunt he went on would have four or five hunters spread out at the edge of the field in a line. They would walk in a row and then walk back, flushing coveys all along the way. He said the bag limit back then was 10 birds a day. Once I ended up learning how to shoot, uh, I, I, I'd get a limit or close to it every, just about every time we went. My mom would cook them up for breakfast and biscuits and gravy and quail. Pretty hard to beat. The 1970s also brought about quality quail hunting, Keith recalled. You, you could find places out in western Oklahoma, you could, you and your dog and your buddy, dog goes on point, you come up behind the dog on point, the birds flush, you shoot, and they fly out across the terrain, and about halfway down there, they'd pick up another cubby that would just get up and go with them. And then they'd go land on a hillside and you'd just head out towards them. Before you could get there, your dogs would point at a third cubby. It, it, was, it, was, it was really easy to limit out. He went quail hunting every chance he could get. And he'd take vacation time scheduled around hunting. As a pipeline worker, he had jobs across the country and was able to learn how the hunters in other states pursued quail. When he was about 10 years old, Keith was given a hunting dog called a dropper, which is half pointer and half setter. That's when I really got into it. I didn't have time for fishing. All I wanted to do was either mess with that dog or look at him hunting quail. At the height of his dog days, Keith was caring for 27 dogs at a time. It's a lot of work, but that, that way you don't wear a dog down, change out dogs. In the good days of the 1960s and early 70s, his dogs got plenty of work, but then the number of birds started dwindling. Quail hunting was slow in the 1980s, and by year 2000, it was really tough, he said. He could only recall one year since 
when bird hunters had a pretty good season. And a lot of a lot of hunters at that time, and I was one of them, thought we should go back to quail days. But you know, the biologists and stuff say that that's really not hunting doesn't affect the overall numbers. My name is Tell Judkins. I'm the upland game biologist with the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. You know, anybody that's hunted quail in the state of Oklahoma or anywhere in North America for that matter, they've noticed that quail numbers have dropped, especially over the last 20 or 30 years. And anybody that's hunted that long or even a few years has formed their own opinion on why our quail numbers have gone down. You see, everyone thinks that it could be disease or predators or things like that when realistically all of these causes of quail mortality or quail death are pretty much a constant no matter what the population is. Whether it's 3 million or 300,000, that number is just taking a very fine little snip off the bottom. Realistically, we have two main problems that impact our quail quite negatively. One is our Oklahoma extreme weather. Now, I know you and I know me, we don't have any control over the weather. If we were, we'd be some very rich people. But the main thing that we can help out with is habitat, the land, the house for that quail. Making sure that it has everything right there readily available that that quail is gonna want throughout a year period. Things like native grasses, things like escape cover, loafing cover, nesting cover, and bare ground are very important for our quail here in Oklahoma and throughout the Bob White Range. So throughout the years, the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation noted the decline as well as our hunters. And so we decided we would start doing something about it. So we started looking into it on the research side to figure out what was happening to our quail. We've looked at things like disease when partnering with uh, Texas to find out what diseases were impacting our birds. We've looked at habitat and movement with Oklahoma State University and still do today. Looking at areas like Pack Saddle and Beaver River and Sandy Sanders and Cross Timbers and areas all throughout Oklahoma to try to really pin down what is happening. When ultimately we find that areas that have good habitat are the only areas that have quail. And if you would like to do more, feel free to contact us, myself or any of our private lands biologists, and we can come out to your property to do an assessment to figure out what can be done to improve habitat for quail. You can also partner with groups like Quail Forever or Pheasants Forever that do a lot here in Oklahoma to really impact and, and make a positive step in Bob White and scaled quail and pheasant habitat. Got a friend from New Jersey, that, and he's an avid quail hunter, but he, he said that the quail there in New Jersey and North Carolina and stuff, they just dried up and went away. And that's why all, all the hunters that we've run into in the motels are telling us the same thing. You guys are how lucky to live here in Oklahoma where you got quail. Keith is committed to keeping and training his dogs, and he's committed to keep hunting as long as he's able. He's also committed to keeping the hunting tradition alive for future generations. So, some of the best hunts I've ever had in my life have been on public ground. Today, Keith has as many hunting dogs as he has grandchildren, eight. And I gave all, every one of them the opportunity if they wanted to learn to hunt and handle guns. His advice to kids who want to start hunting? Get involved in conservation groups such as Quail Forever, National Wild Turkey Federation, and Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. But I'm glad to see outfits like Quail Forever that's doing things with habitats and stuff. It's, it's a drop in the bucket, but it's 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 making some headway. For Keith Nip, hunting is not about bagging game. It's about watching his dogs, seeing sights like a mature buck running across the field, and simply being outdoors. <laughs>